Hi, everybody, and welcome to Episode 1 of Scale Modeling with Mike Eschey and Building and Detailing the Monogram Revell 148 Scale B25J. We did a comprehensive tape-up review of this kit a few months ago, and now I'm going to show you how to build it and detail it. The new Revell company has reissued this kit several times, and it's still on the market today under the Revell label. Wherever possible, you should reinforce your wings. This is especially important with tricycle landing gear kits that are going to have a lot of weight in the nose. To fix the small gap in the landing light in the wings, the easy way to do it is just to add a thin strip of plastic right along the edge. To open up the air exhaust vents on the trailing edges of the wings, you need a set of micro drill bits, a set of micro files, and a really sharp number 11 exacto blade. The vent on the left has had its surface drilled out and it's really important to get these holes as close to one another as possible. The vent on the right has had the thin plastic between the holes cut out with the tip of a really sharp number 11 exacto blade. Shave as much of the plastic as you can without distorting the rectangular shape of the opening. Using a set of flat microfiles, you can carefully shape the openings and remove the excess plastic and if you take your time and be patient, the openings will look really good. Tape the wings together as tightly as you can with strips of masking tape as a first step for the gluing process. This taping process allows you to make adjustments to the two part halves as you work your way across the wing to get a really tight fit. That thin strip of plastic that I added to the inside of the wing closed up that gap in the landing light real well. Medium viscosity super glue has great capillary action. To take advantage of this capillary action, here's how I glue my parts together. I make a puddle of the super glue on some white cardstock, and then using a 0.018 inch diameter stiff brass wire, I dip the tip in some super glue and run it along that seam line. I also keep the glue about a sixteenth of an inch away from the masking tape. The super glue will seep right in between the gluing surfaces. After the glue is dried, remove the masking tape and glue those areas that were under the masking tape. After the glue is dried, add a few more layers of the super glue to fill in any tiny gaps and voids, and you're ready to go to the next step. The tape up I did revealed a gap where the wings connect to the fuselage, but there's a really simple fix to this, and I'm going to show you how I did it. The ends of the wings need to be slightly wider. So what I did was I tested different thicknesses of plastic and carefully slipped them in between the wing halves to see which fit was best. To prevent the seams from cracking, I added large amounts of super glue to the inside areas where the openings were in the wings and got the glue as far in as I could. Here are my recommendations on the thickness of the plastic and its positioning on both the port and starboard wings. I also added thin strips of plastic to square off the edges where the two part halves meet together. For all my seam work, I used various grades of sanding sticks, both wet and dry, a flexophile with the various grades of the flexophile sandpaper, and a number 11 exacto blade, which I hold at about a 45 degree angle to the seam line for scraping. To check for any flaws or imperfections along a seam line, I use silver paint, which is a great detector for these types of flaws. I add super glue right over the silver paint in those areas that need additional applications. The discolored silver paint acts as a locator for the additional applications of super glue, which I then carefully sand and scrape smooth. I repeat this process of adding super glue, sanding and scraping, Rechecking with silver paint and doing it again until the seams are perfect. Here's a close up, and here's why I use silver paint. You can clearly see that there is no seam line at all except for that one small area where I added more super glue. The elevator wing fits together fairly tight, and it was taped and glued together just like on the wing assemblies. The insides of the rudder assemblies need to be cleaned up so that the two part halves will fit together tightly. 
These inside areas can be completely smoothed out with a sanding stick. Here again, the rudder assemblies were carefully taped together, super glue applied along the edges, and then the edges were scraped and sanded smooth. Silver paint was then applied along the edges, and any flaws were fixed. The fuselage halves were taped together tightly, and then the elevator was carefully positioned and taped into place, and then the rudders were attached to the elevator using testers red tube glue so that it had some working time for proper positioning. After the testers glue dried, I carefully added small amounts of super glue along the seam lines and made sure that the super glue filled the area inside of the seams and the voids. This series of photos will show you the progression of how I dealt with these seams in these tiny areas. With all four seam lines filled, it's now time to start sanding. I use small strips of masking tape to protect the surface detail. This area was sanded and then more super glue was applied. The super glue applied along the edges here will help contour this part into the elevator. Just a little bit more super glue was added to this area. It will be sanded smooth and this seam is done. I use these small sanding sticks with various grades, both wet and dry, in order to get into this really tight area where these seams were located. And if you cut the edge of those sanding sticks just like I did at an angle, it makes sanding so much easier. In episode 3, I'm going to show you how I remove the elevator control surfaces and then reattach them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Scale Modeling with Mike Eshe, and stay tuned for episode 2 where I'm going to show you how to remove the ailerons, clean them up, and reattach them. So stay tuned for episode 2.